Let's do paper 2. Let's look at instructions given. So you get 10 questions here. 5 questions from part A and 5 questions from part B. Each question carries 10 marks. And these are the two important lines you have to read. Two formulae given in the paper. So you don't have to memorize anything. Volume of cone with base radius r and perpendicular height h is 1 third pi r squared h. And volume of the sphere of base radius r is 4 over 3 pi r cube. So in the first page, you can see the question 1 is given and then 2 and 3. And the next page, continuation of question 3, 4, 5. 6 that's part a then part b question number 7 8 9 10 and then next page 11 and the last page you get question number 12 so let's do the question paper now question number one this is about percentage question Simple interest is given and you have several parts. So let's do the first part. Mr. Karnasena is a retired person. He deposited 100,000 in a bank which pays an annual simple interest rate 15% and another 100,000 rupees. He invested to buy shares when the market price of a share is 50 rupees and the annual dividends income per share is 5 rupees. So first part says find the interest he will receive from the bank at the end of the first year. So what is the simple interest rate? 15%. So how you do this? So interest rate is 15%. You have to multiply by 100,000. So interest is equal to 15 percent that means 15 over 100 multiplied by 100,000 rupees. You can cross out two zeros. So 15 times 100 one five zero zero thousand five hundred rupees. This is for one year. So next question, at the end of the year, he sold all the shares and the total amount he received from that an annual dividends income is 15,000 more than the amount he received as the interest from the bank. Find the selling price of a share. So what is the interest he received here? This is 15,000, one, two, three. I missed out one zero there. So 15,000 is the interest and 15,000 more of that is the total amount received. So what's the total received now? Earlier 15,000 rupees plus another 15,000. So altogether 30,000 rupees. Then what is the selling price of a share? So first we have to find out what's the dividend income obtained from this. So what is the income value here? 5 rupees per share. So how many shares are there? So you have to find out how many shares are there. The market price is given 50 rupees. So let's first find number of shares. Number of shares is equal to 100,000 he invested and 50 rupees is the market price. So you have to divide by 50. So when you divide, what's the value? You get 2,000 shares he bought. 2,000 shares and each one 5 rupees he gains as the dividend income. So what is the dividend income? 
dividend income is equal to 5 per share multiplied by number of shares. So altogether we get 10,000 rupees. Now what's the capital gain? Now the total income is 30,000. When you subtract dividend income you can find out the capital gain. So capital gain is equal to 30,000 rupees minus 10,000. So you get 20,000 rupees as the capital gain. Now what you have to find? You need to find out now 20,000 from capital gain. So selling price you need to find. So what is the selling price of this one? So total selling price is equal to 20,000 is the capital gain, 100,000 rupees is the invested amount. So total is 100,000 rupees plus 20,000. So you get 120,000 rupees altogether. Now you can find the selling price per share. How many shares are there? 2000 shares are there. So you can divide this by 2000 to get the selling price per share. And 20,000, the total selling price divided by 2,000. Three, three zeros get cancelled out. Two and this, you get 60 rupees is the selling price. So according to this one, buying price is 50 rupees and the selling price per share is 60 rupees. So that's the question. Now let's give marks for this. So we have done first part. So first part so you can get two marks. So first part two marks. We know that it's we know that it's 10 marks for each question. Here you can get one mark and then this one, two marks to find the number of shares and you can get here one mark and capital gain one mark and This part will give one mark for this one and finding the selling price per share one mark. So altogether 10 marks. Let's see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we have to give one mark. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And we'll give one more mark here. So one more mark for finding the final answer. Let's give one mark here for this calculation as well. So altogether, you get 10 marks for this question. Let's do the next one. An incomplete table to draw the graph of function y equals x squared minus 2x minus 2 is given below. So this is a quadratic graph. So the table is given and you are asked to find out the answers using the graph. So let's do the first part. Let's look at the first part. So you have given the table and you are asked to find the value of y when x equals 1. So what you do? You have to substitute x equals 1 in the equation. So what's the equation? 
y equals x squared minus 2x minus 2. Substitute x equals 1. 1 squared minus 2 times 1. This is 2 times 1 minus 2. So 1 minus 2 minus 1 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3. So this is minus 3. So you get one mark for that. Then using a suitable scale, draw the graph of the given quadratic function in a graph sheet. So you have to find out the scale. Now you have to ask for a graph paper and see what's the minimum x value minus 2 and maximum is 4. So we can take 10 squares for one unit. So let's take from here minus 2, minus 1, 0. Here we can draw the y-axis first. Then we can mark starting from plus 6 all the y values 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2 and minimum minus 3. Then you can draw the x-axis. x-axis is this one and now you can mark the points. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4 and the negative values up to minus 2, minus 1, minus 2. So you get one mark for the scaling. So this is y-axis and this is x-axis. Now we'll mark the points. Minus 2, 6. Here. Minus 1, 1. 0, minus 2. 1, minus 3. 2, minus 2. 3, 1. 4, 6. Here. Now you can connect all the points smoothly. But my, my advice is you can connect the corner ones using the ruler. But only those two points. The other ones you have to connect smoothly with the pencil. So let's take the vertex point. That's the minimum value in this graph. This one. So here from here to here. Now this side. So it's from here. Here. So this is the quadratic graph. Let's write down the scale. So 10 squares 1 unit means this way 0 0.1, 1 over 10. This way also 10 squares 1 unit, 0 0.1 is very small square. So this is the graph, so you get 3 marks for that. Now we'll try to answer the questions using this graph. Third part, write the range of the value of x where the function increasing. So where the function is increasing? From here to here. That part is increasing. But it's, it says the function is if in the range of y in between minus 2 and 6. So there's a condition for that. So you have to think about y values minus 2 and 6. So minus 2 is not included. So we'll take a broken line and draw y equals minus 2 line. That's the horizontal line. So here is the y equals minus 2 line. What about y equals 6 line? It's a continuous line because it's included. 6 is included. So I'll draw this line. I'll draw this line. This is the y equals 6 line. Now they're asking here to here, write down the range of value of x. So what is the x value here? When you take the this point, this x value is here. That's 2. What about here? The x value is already known. x equals 4. 
So this is the increasing function in between y minus 2 and 6. So what's the x value? x value is 2 to 4. So how you are going to write down the range of value of x? x should be in between minus 2, not minus 2, plus 2, plus 2 to 4. 4 is included. Can you see this, this point is included? But this one is not included. Y equals minus 2 point is not included. So you can't put the equal sign. So X is in between 2 to 4. Then what's the next part? Fourth part. Express the given function in the form of Y equals X minus A whole thing squared plus B where A and B are two numbers. So how you write in this form? When you can refer the vertex point, it's easy to write in this form. So what's the vertex point? Vertex point is 1 minus 3. So 1 minus 3 is the vertex point. So here A becomes the x coordinate of the vertex point. So we can easily write down y equals x minus 1 squared. And B becomes the Y value of the vertex point. So that's minus 3. So that's how you can write down the quadratic graph using this form. So 1 and minus 3. Then using the graph write down the positive root of x squared minus 2x minus 2 equal to 0. What is equal to 0 means? The y value is 0. That means we are the values on the x-axis. Find the value of root 3 to the first decimal place. So when y equals 0, what's the value of these two points? What are the values? So here we can see in my graph like 2.7 and minus 0.7. So x becomes 2.7 or minus 0.7. This point and this point. Now when this is 0, you can take so x minus 1 whole thing squared minus 3 is also 0. Now take minus 3 to this side, you get positive 3 is equal to x minus 1 whole thing squared. Now what you do? Take square root both sides, x minus 1 becomes square root of 3 but this is positive or negative root 3. So what is the root 3 value? We need only positive root 3 value. Positive root 3 means we only consider the positive value here. So what is the positive value of root 3? That becomes the root value here is 2.7 minus 1. So what's the value? 2.7 minus 1 becomes 1.7. That's the positive root 3 value. If you want negative value, you can refer the other point. But in this question, they are asking the root 3 value, positive root 3 value to the first decimal place. So we can refer only one decimal place here, 1.7. So that's the answer. So let's give marks. So I told you for the graph, we are giving three marks. So how you get marks for the graph? We get adjusting the scale one mark and marking the points one mark and connecting the graph smoothly one mark. So three marks there and finding the first part we did found the value when x equals one. That's one mark. And then we did 
the range of x value that's two marks and this one two marks and the last part so all together three four five six seven eight last part two marks so all together we can give 10 marks for this question let's do the third question this is about simultaneous equations you have to construct two equations and solve and then we need to do this part that's the matrix question so let's do question number three total cost of two kilograms of sugar and three kilograms of dal is 720 rupees price of one kilo of dal is 15 rupees more than the price of one kilo of sugar by taking price of one kilo of sugar is x rupees and one kilo of dal is y rupees build up a pair of simultaneous equations and by solving it find the values of x and y so first we need to take what is x that's the price of one kilo of sugar y as price of one kilo of dal now we'll try to construct the two equations Total cost of two, 2 kilos of sugar, 1 kilo is x, 2 kilos is 2x, plus 3 kilos of dal, 3y, that's the total, cost is 720. So that's our first equation. What's the second one? Price of 1 kilo of dal, that's y, is 15 rupees more than the price of 1 kilo of sugar. Price of 1 kilo of sugar is x and it's more than 15 rupees of that. So that's your second equation. We have two equations we need to solve. So what is the easiest way to do substitution? Instead of y, we can substitute x plus 15. So let's do that. Take the first equation, substitute x plus 15 instead of y. Now what's the next step? Expand brackets. 3 times 15, 45. Then you can... At the like terms, 2x and 3x becomes 5x. And I can take 45 to the other side. Subtract 45. When you change the sides, the sign changed. What's it? Subtraction 10, 1, 5, 7, 6. 675 is 5x. So how you find x? Divide both sides by 5 x becomes 1 for f this is 5 for 17 that's 5 times 3 15 2 that's 5 so 135 for x so what's the y, y value we can take the second equation and substitute the x value 135 to get the y value so 135 plus 15, you get 150 as y value. So that means the price of price of one kilo of sugar is x value. That's 135 rupees. Price of 1 kilo of dal is 150 rupees. So how many marks we can give? In this question, this is just part A. 
So let's see how many marks we can give. So we can give two marks for writing the two equations. And three marks for finding solutions for this equation. So three and two, that's five marks for part A. Let's do the second part. Price of an apple and, a, and an orange of two shops A and B are given below. Shop A, 40 rupees and 55. Shop B, 45 and 50 rupees. Represent the above data by two by two matrix where the columns represent the shops. That's really important to take it because columns represent the shop. You can draw the way around as well. So shop A and B columns means, so here if you draw the two by two matrix, that means two rows and two columns. So you get four values. So A is the uh, shop A is first column, shop B is second column. So if you take rows, then rows becomes price of apple and price of orange. So shop A, price of apple is 40 rupees. And shop B, the price of apple is 45. When you consider second row, that becomes price of oranges. In shop A, that's 55. Shop B, that's 50. So that's the 2 by 2 matrix. Then Mr. Kumara wants to buy 20 apples and 30 oranges. Represent the quantity in 1 by 2 matrix. 1 by 2 means 1 row, 2 columns. So wants to buy 20 apples and 30 oranges. So we took apples first. So you have to take 20 and 30. That's the matrix. Represent this quantity in a 1 to 2 matrix and take the product of the above two matrices. So take the product. So when you are multiplying, so can we write this one first and do this one? No, because number of columns of the first one should be equal to the number of rows of the second matrix. So here when you are multiplying you have to write down 1 by 2 first 20 30 multiplied by 40 45 55 50 you get the 1 by 2 here 2 by 2 so the what's the final matrix 1 by 2 so that's the product so let's calculate the product 1 by 2. 20, how you multiply? First row with first column. 20 with 40. So I'll write down what is the first value? 20 times 40 and plus 30 times 55. That's the first value. What about the second value? That's second, first row, second column. 20 with 45 plus 30 with 50. So what's the multiplication? This is 800. This one, 3 times 5, 15, 15, 16. So what's the total? 0, 5, 6 and 8, 14, 2, 2450. What about this value? 100, uh, 1500. And this one, 2 times 45 is 900. So addition becomes this value. So 0, 0, 9 plus 5, 14, 1 remain, 2400. So that's the product. So how many marks? 
So here for this matrix multiplication you are getting here one mark here this one one mark and this is one mark for writing this matrix and the product product is one mark we give two marks for each value so two marks and the next part is using the above answer and by giving reasons state which shop is more profitable for Mr. Kumar. So what's the value we got? We got 2450, 2400 from the previous one, 2450 and 2400. What is this? This is for Apple, the cost this is the total cost from shop A. This is shop B. So reason state which shop is more profitable. So here the cost is less in shop B. So 2400 is less than 2450. So this is uh, shop B is more profitable. When you compare these two values, we can see shop B is more profitable. What's, what's the mark here? For the last part, you can get one mark. So this one, one mark. So we gave 10 marks for that question as well. Now let's take the next question. Question number four. This is algebra question. You need to show that you are getting this equation and then solve and find out the x value. So let's do the first part. The following figure shows a rectangle of length x plus 3 and breadth is x units and a right angle triangle with the given measurements if the area of the above two plane figures are equal show that x satisfy the quadratic equation x squared plus 2x minus 4 equals 0. So the areas are equal so what you have to do find the area of the rectangle find the area of the triangle and then equate. What's the area of the rectangle length into breadth that is equal to what's the area of the triangle half base and into height if you take x plus 2 as the base what's the height height also x plus 2 now easily we'll first multiply by 2 so you get 2x into x plus 3 is equal to x plus 2 into x plus 2. Expand brackets. 2 in x into x, 2x squared plus 6x equals, when you multiply using foil or rainbow method, you get x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4. Now simplify and take all terms to one side. 2x squared minus x squared. Then this one is 4x, 2x and 2x, 4x. 6x, take 4x to this side, minus 4x. And 4, when you take it to this side, that's minus 4. Now 2x squared minus x squared is x squared. 6x minus 4x is plus 2x minus 4 equals 0. So that's what you have given. So we showed that this is x squared plus 2x minus 4. Now what's the next step? And by giving reasons show that x can take only one value. So we have to solve the quadratic equation. 
So what are the two methods to solve this equation? Quadratic equation, factorization method or completing square method. This time you can't factorize because factors of minus 4, you can't get plus 2. So let's use quadratic formula. What's the formula? Minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. What's a? Coefficient of x squared. That's 1. b is coefficient of x. That's 2. c equals the constant term minus 4. So let's use the formula. Minus b minus 2 plus or minus b squared is 4 minus 4a c. c is minus 4 over 2a. Now simplify minus 2 plus or minus 4 times 4 16 that's plus plus 16 plus 4 plus 20. How can you simplify root 20? You can write what's the highest square number 4. 4 times 5. Now when you take square root you get 2 root 5. Because square root of 4 is 2. Divide by 2. So that means we have to divide both by 2. Or you can take 2 out. And then cross out with this 2. You get minus 1 plus or minus root 5 as the answer. So what are the x values? x can be minus 1 plus root 5 or x can be minus 1 minus root 5. Now when you take this answer, both minus means this is a minus value. Can you take a minus value for a length? You can't take. So you can ignore this answer. X cannot be negative. So therefore, X can take only this value, minus 1 plus root 5. So we can substitute root 5 as 2.2 and find the length of the rectangle to the first decimal place. So let's do that. 2.2. You can substitute as root 5. So what's the answer? 2.2 minus 1 is 1.2 units. So what's the length of the rectangle? That's x plus 3. Length becomes x plus 3. So substitute 1.2 for x and find out the length. That's 4.2 units is the length of the rectangle. So let's give marks. So if you are getting three marks for showing the equation here. Three marks. And solving equation, here you get four marks. So all these up to this point, four marks. And showing that x cannot be negative and only the positive answer we have to take, that's one mark. And final value for length of the rectangle, that's one mark. So one, two and six. Six and nine, we have given nine, three. And one mark here. You have to simplify and one more mark here. Four marks for the first part. So altogether, ten marks for this question.
let's do question number five so this is about bearings and distances are given so you have to use trigonometric table so that means this is a trigonometric question and you have to answer the questions as well so you have to refer any trig table so let's see how we can do a b and c are three points which are located on a horizontal ground the bearing of c from b is 125 degrees bearing so what is bearing measuring the angle from north clockwise direction so if you are going to mark this on this one so this is the north line bearing means this angle from north clockwise direction this is 125 degrees and BC length is 50 meters so this is 50 meters point A is located due west so this is the horizontal line and BX C angle is 90 so this is perpendicular line vertical and the horizontal line copy the given figure in your answer sheet and include the given data in it so that's how you can give write down all them all the data so how many marks for this one you are getting two marks for showing this 125 50 meters just two marks you can get for that Second part, using the trig tables, find the length of BX to the nearest meter. So what we found here, we'll mark it again, 125 and this is 50 meters. You need to find BX length. So if this is 125, what is this angle? 180 minus 125. So what's that? 55 degrees here now if you want bx length you have to consider this right angle triangle so to this angle bx is the adjacent and bc is the hypotenuse so if you are using the trig ratio what you have to use adjacent and hypotenuse that's cosine cos ratio so it's difficult to refer cos table from the sine table. So you have to go backwards. So we can find out this angle and use sine ratio. So what is this angle? 35 degrees. So this angle is 35. To that angle, this is Bx is the opposite. Opposite 10. Hypotenuse ratio is sine. So we'll use sine ratio because referring sine table is easier than referring cosine table. So sine 35 is equal to Bx is the opposite over hypotenuse is 50. So how you find out Bx? You have to cross multiply. 50 times sine 35. So what is sine 35? Now you have to refer sine tables. So what is sine table? Sine 35. So we'll look at sine table. Sine 35. Here sine 35 value is 0.5736. 36. Now you can multiply by 50. First put a 0, multiply by 5. 5 times 6, 30. 3 remaining. 5 times 3, 15 plus 3, 18. 1 remaining. 5 times 7, 35 plus 1, 36. 3 remaining. 5 times 5, 25 plus 3, 28. And four decimal places so you get 28.68 and you have to give the answer to the nearest meter so this is 28.68
29 meters is the BX length. So let's give marks for that. So this one you get 4 marks. So 4 marks for the whole thing. Let's do the next one. If AB is 40 meters, find the value of BAX. BAX is this angle and AB is 40 meters. Now this one is given 40. So we know these values. And we found BX is now 29 meters. So let's mark that also here. Now using ABX triangle, you can find BX angle. So to this angle, opposite is BX and hypotenuse is AB. So what's the ratio? Again, sign. So we can create an equation. So we'll put this is a sine x or alpha or whatever letter theta so you are familiar with theta sine theta is equal to bx over ab that's same as 29 over 40 so what's the decimal value you have to divide by 40 so 29 divided by 40 40 times 7, eight, uh, seven. 7 times 4, 28. Then for 100, that's 2, 80, 20. So that's 5. 5, 200. So you get 0 0.725 and we need four decimal places, so we can put zero there. Now, how you are going to find the angle theta? Theta is the sine inverse of this answer. So, this is sine inverse of 0 0.7250. So, like log and anti log, how you refer backwards? The sine value is given, and to find the angle, you have to refer backwards. So now you have to check where you can find 7250. 7250 in the second table. Look at carefully and see. 7234 is there, 50. So 34, how many more you need? 16. So if you take this one, then we need another 16. 16 from 8. So have you referred that? 46, 20 and 8. 28. 46, 28. So 46 degrees. 46 degrees and 28 minutes. So the angle is 46 degrees and 28 minutes. So we'll give marks for that. So we can give two marks, two marks for this decimal value and finding the angle, one mark. So three marks for that. And what's the next one? Find the bearing of B seen from A. Bearing. Seen from A. So we draw a north line here. What's the bearing of B from A? Means that you have to find out this angle. But from the previous part, we found this angle. So what's that angle? 46 and 28. So 46 degrees and 28 here and this is 90 degrees so how can you find out this angle 90 minus that so 90 minus that means we can write as degrees and minutes 8960 
89 degrees and 60 minutes. Subtract 46, 28. So what you get? 32 minutes. And 43 degrees. So this angle, the bearing of B seen from A is 43 degrees and 32 minutes. So for that part, you can give one mark. So all together we have given 10 marks for this question. Let's do question number six. So this is about statistics question and you have to find the mean and you have to answer the given question. Let's do that. The below frequency distribution shows a collection of data regarding the time period of 50 calls taken by Mr. Ranil during a certain day. 10 to 20 means 10 or more than 10 but less than 20. So ten, first value is included. Using the given data, find the mean time of a call to the nearest second. So how you are going to find the mean? You have to construct the table in columns, okay, not in rows. It's easy to write, find out the value when you write in columns. So first one is intervals. 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50 and 50 to 60. And you can find the total in the next row. And we can find the mid values. How do you find the mid values? That's the x value. And then divide by 2. Even you get boundaries or uh, limits, you can add the limits or boundaries and divide by 2. So here, class boundaries are given. So 0 plus 10 divide by 2, that's fine. 10 plus 20 divide by 2, that's 30 divide by 2, 50. So you can see a pattern now, adding 10. So 25, 35, 45, 55 are the mid values. And the frequencies are given 8, 10, 20, 6, 4, 2. Here only few numbers are there. We'll use this method. See, total of fx divided by total of frequency. If they have given, take the assumed mean, you have to do that way. So we'll do this time using normal method, the total of fx. So you have to create the table, the column fx. Multiply f and x, 8 times 5, 40. 10 times 15, 150. 20 times 25, 500. 6 into 35, 210. 45 times 4, 4 times 5, 20, 4 times 4, 16, plus 2, 18. So 55 times 210. So what's the total? 0, 9, 10, 18, 19, 1 remaining. 2, 3, 4, 5. 10, 11, 1,190. So how do you find out the mean value? Mean is equal to total fx, that's sigma fx over total of frequency, that's sigma f. We use the symbol sigma for total. So what is the total of fx? 1,190. Total of f? What's the total? 10, 30, 40, 50. So you have to divide by 50. 0 get cancelled out. 5 times 
to 10 for 19, 5 times 3, 15. For 40, that's 8. 23.8. This is about number of mean time of a call to the nearest second. So 23.8 to the nearest second, you can write as 24. 24 seconds. So that's the mean value. Let's give marks for that part. So you are getting one mark for calculating the mean values and two marks for calculating fx values. And then the total, one mark. And finding the mean, three marks. So three, four, five, six, seven marks for calculating the mean value. Now what's the next part? If one rupee and 20 cents charge for a call up to the class interval which the mean time is include. Interval that the mean time include. So 24 seconds we are in the third interval. So up to that point 1 rupee and 20 cents. So how many calls are there all together? So you have to add it. So when you take the addition, these three, 25 plus 5, 30 and 45. So this is the so when you add these three intervals, this is the frequency. So what's the total? 20 plus 10, 30, 38 calls are there. And then the other one, after that, they charge only 2 rupees and 40. So here to here, 2 rupees and 40 cents. 12 calls are there. So we'll find out the total cost. Total cost is equal to 1.20. Multiplied by 38, that's first 38 calls and the rest 12 calls, that's 2.4. Let's multiply. This is 120 and 38. Multiply separately and add it. 30 and 8. What's the total? When you put two zeros, that's 45 rupees and 60 cents. What about this one? 12 times 0, 48, 24 plus 4, 28. So 28, 80. When you add it, you get 0, 8 plus 6, 14. So 74, 40 rupees is the total cost. So 74 rupees and 40 cents. So how many marks for the last part? You get 3 marks for the last part. So all together... 7 marks for calculating the mean and the last part 3 marks all together we have given 10 marks for that question. Let's do part B. So part B you already know we have to select only 5 questions out of 6 questions given. So the first question normally is about progression. So let's do this question now. Fruit plants were planted in Ramindu's land which is trapezium shaped 
such that first row consists of four plants, second row consists of seven plants and third row with ten plants. Number of plants in each row are in an arithmetic progression. So they have already given it's an arithmetic progression. Find the common reference of this arithmetic progression. So what's the first one? First row is four plants, second row is seven, third row is ten. So first term is four, second term is seven, third term is ten. So if this is arithmetic progression, there should be a common difference. How you find out the common difference? D, any term minus the previous term. You can do seven minus four or ten minus seven. So what you get? Three is the common difference. Then Next part, how many plants were planted in the 10th row? So we know the first term is 4. That's we take as a common difference is 3. How do you find out the 10th one, 10th one, 10th term? We can use the formula. What's the 10th term? Tn equals first term plus n minus 1d. We know that first term is 4. We need 10th term. That means n equals 10. So 10 minus 1 is 9 times d equals 3. According to Bodmer's, 9 times 3, 27 first and then add 4. 31 plants are there in the 10th row. Next one, if the plants were planted only up to the 10th row, that's the last row, how many plants were there in total? So starting from the first row, only 10th, up to 10th row is there. So they are asking in total how many plants. So you have to find out the sum of first 10 rows. We know the last term, 10th term we found before. And we know the first term. What's the suitable formula? So Sn equals n over 2 first term plus the last term. We can easily use that and find out the total total of all total number of plants. S10. N is 10. First term is 4. Last term we found before 31. 4 plus 31 is 35 multiplied by 10 divided by 2. So that means multiply by 5. 175 plants are there all together. So what's the next part? Ramindo predicted that if there were 180 more fruit plants, he can plant five more rows. Can he fulfill his prediction? Give reasons. So, another five more rows if you add 180 plants to that. So, let's see. If there are five more rows altogether, how many rows? Earlier, 10 rows. 10 plus 5, 15. So, what's the total needed for 15 rows? Total number of plants needed for 15 rows. S15. 15 divided by 2. Now, we don't know the last value. So, we can use the other formula. What's the other formula? 2a plus n minus 1d. So, 2a. A is starting value plus n minus 1. That's 15 minus 1 is 14. D is 3. So we'll find out first how many plants needed for 15 rows. 8 plus 14 times 3. 42 here. 42 plus 8. 50. So 50 divided by 2, you get 25. 25 times 15. So multiply 25 times 15. You 
get 375. So we need 375 plants. We found we need 375 plants all together to create 15 rows. Now let's see. We found 175 for the first 10 rows, 175. And if we take 180 more plants, he can plant 5 more rows. So let's subtract. Let's subtract 375 and the total for 10 rows, 175. How many plants needed more? 200 plants needed. But according to this one, he says 180 only. So we need 200. So 200 is... As 200 is more than 180, so we can say not fulfill his prediction. Let's give marks. So this one we can give. Two marks for finding the total for 15 rows and then one mark for this calculation and one mark for this one so two three four and for the previous part we can give three marks and the first part 31 that's two marks. And the first one, just one mark. So let's see. One, two, three, 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 six, six plus four, ten marks for this question. Now we have a construction question. So you can use only a pair of compasses and a straight edge. So you have to keep all the construction lines clearly. So don't erase any of these construction lines. So let's construct this diagram. Construct the triangle ABC such that AB equals 8, BC is 6 centimeters and the B angle is 90. So you have to use the ruler and the compass. So let's take the ruler first. So we'll construct AB length. So take the ruler, draw a line. Now take the compass and you can measure 8 centimeters from the compass. 8 centimeters measure and you can mark on that line so we can mark this point and then this point so that's the AB line 8 centimeters then you have to construct 90 degree angle for B so what we can do, we can extend the line and here take the compass and how you construct 90 degrees, keep the compass on top of B, take certain distance take certain distance and you can mark an arc here You can mark an arc here and other way around. Then you can take a longer length here. Keep the compass on top of the two drawn arcs and you can mark the above arcs. And then you can connect 
the B point and this arc, you can connect B point and the intersecting point with a line. So you constructed 90 degree angle there. And then we know B say 6 centimeters. You take the compass and measure 6 centimeter length. And you can mark the C point. So keep the compass on B. And then you can mark the C point. C point is here. After you do that, you can construct the ABC triangle. Connect A and C. Then construct the angle bisector of ACB angle and name the intersection point of that and AB line as O. So angle bisector you have to use the compass. Take the compass you have to construct the angle bisector here. You take certain distance and you can mark two arcs here and here. And then take the same length or different length and you can construct the middle arcs here and here. And now you can connect this point. You can connect this point and this intersection point. And, the, and label this point as O. So we can see this angle and this angle both are equal. Then construct the circle which touches AC and BC lines and the center located on AB. So we know if this is the angle bisector, what is the center it touches here so the center is O. Oh, so you have to identify what is center it's located on a b and angle bisector we have to draw inscribed circle so how you construct inscribed circles you have to draw angle bisectors and the intersecting point of two angle bisectors meets the center but if the center is on AB so the set the this should be the point it should be on the angle bisector as well so take the compass now we know the center we take center here what is the radius so it touches the AC and BC lines and the center located on AB. So we can take this, this touches means here OB is the radius. So we can draw the circle. So you can see it touches AC line and touches the BC line at B. Construct another tangent from A to the circle other than AC. So we can see this is A is the outside point and it touches the circle. So th this is AC is a tangent. How you draw another tangent? We know that tangent lengths are equal from an outside point. So here first we can take the tangent length. Here this is the contacting point with the circle. Here to here is the tangent length. So you can take the same length and mark any point on the circle. That's the second tangent. We know that only we can draw two tangents from an outside point. So we have this point. Now we can draw the other tangent. So other tangent becomes this one. Name the intersection point of the above tangent and the extended CB 
line as E and find the perimeter of ACE triangle without measuring. So let's see when we extend this line and this line it means that the point E so E is here. So we need to find what is the length of AEC triangle, the perimeter of AEC triangle. So we know from the beginning what are the lengths we found here. This is 6 centimeters and this is 8. And we know that these are the tangents. So this triangle and this triangle both are congruent. So if this is 6, this is also 6 centimeters. And this is 8. And what about AC? It's a right angle triangle. We know 6 and 8. We can find AC length using Pythagoras theorem. So what's the Pythagoras theorem? AC squared is equal to 8 squared plus 6 squared. So when you find that 64 plus 36 and when you take the square root you get square root of 100 that's 100 square root means 10 centimeter is the AC length. So the two triangles are congruent this side and this side both are the same so this is also 10. So what's the perimeter of this triangle ACE perimeter. That means 10 plus 10 and 6 and 6. 26 plus 6, 32 centimeters. So that's the perimeter of the triangle. So we didn't measure the lens just by calculation we can find out the perimeter of ACE. So let's give marks for this question. So constructing the triangle we can give three marks and one mark for angle bisector and constructing the circle set identifying center O as one mark and constructing the circle another one mark and constructing another tangent two marks and finding the perimeter it's another two marks. So let's see three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten marks for the whole question. Let's do question number nine. This is about circle theorems and sometimes proves are they are congruent triangles. So let's do the first part. Center of the given two circles is O. AB and BC are two chords of the large circle and those two chords touches the small circle at D and E. Respectively, extended BO line meets AC at F. Show that AC is equal to 2DE. Now can you see it's given here AB and BC are two chords. O is the center of the small circle. So OD is the radius of the small circle. So we know that this radius and this is a tangent line that's perpendicular. So we can write first OD is perpendicular to AB. Same way we can say the other way around this is also 90 degrees. OE is perpendicular to BC. What's the reason? You have to write down radius is always radius is perpendicular to 
to the tangent. That's why it's 90 degrees. And here, these two lengths are equal. That's the radius. Then we can see, now BC is the chord for the big circle. And AB is the chord for the big circle. If you draw a perpendicular from the center to a chord, this becomes the point, becomes the midpoint of the chord. So according to that, we can say D is the midpoint. So you can write AD is equal to DB. This line is equal to this one. I'll put another line. And other way around, this length is equal to this one. CE is equal to EB. What's the reason? The perpendicular line drawn from the center, perpendicular line drawn from center to the chord bisects. bisects the chord. That's the reason. So these two lengths are equal. So if these two are equal, D and E are midpoints of the two chords, what can you say? According to midpoint theorem, according to midpoint theorem, we can say that AC is double of DE. Now we can say AC is equal to double of DE as midpoint theorem. Midpoint theorem. Because the E is the midpoint, D is the midpoint, and when you connect the midpoints, AC becomes parallel to DE. We can write that also. AC is parallel to DE as well as AC is double of DE or DE becomes half of AC. So we can show easily AC is 2DE. So how many marks for this part? So we can give one mark for identified. Two lines are perpendicular and then AD equals DB and this one two marks identifying and final one using midpoint theorem this becomes double of D. So that's one mark so all together we have to give five marks. So two, two, three, four, five. So another one mark here. Identify midpoint theorem. So five marks for the first part. Now let's do the second part. Show that ABF triangle is congruent to BFC. ABF triangle ABF and these two triangles. So let's see what we found. We found this is the midpoint and this is the midpoint of this. And these two are perpendicular. So these information we know already. Now let's see you have to show ABF triangle is congruent to BFC triangle these two triangles. So let's take BD and BE. What can you say? BD, BD and BE. Those are the two tangents drawn from the outside point B to the small circle. So the tangent lengths are equal. 
So BT is equal to BE. Tangent lengths are equal. So this length is same as this. So again we found BD is same as AD. So from that we can say BE is equal to AD. BE is equal to BE is equal to AD as well. So we can see all these lengths are equal now. All these lengths are equal. We can write the reason here for the first re region tangent lengths are equal. Tangent lengths are equal. And this one we proved BD equals AD, that one we proved before. So therefore we can say all these lengths are equal, BE is equal to BD, that's equal to BE is BD, AD, CE, all these lengths are equal, so therefore the chord AB is equal to BC. The two chords are equal. And when you take the triangle, we can see BF is the common length. Common length for the two triangles. That's also equal. And what else we can say? We know these two angles also equal. The line drawn from the outside point to the center bisect the two tangents. So we can write DBF angle is equal to FBC angle. The line Connected center and the point and point point bisect angle between tangents. That angle is equal now. We know two lengths and included angle. So what's the congruency? What's the congruency case? Side angle side. So we can say ABF triangle is congruent to BFC triangle because of side angle side. So that's how you can show the congruency. So let's Give marks for this part. So we can give five marks for the whole question. So we give one mark each for these three parts and then giving this one the case one mark. And here identifying the two tangents are equal, one mark. So five marks for this part and total marks given as 10 marks. Let's do question number 10. So question number 10 regards to circle theorems and finding angles. So let's do that. A, B, C and D points are on the circle. P, A, Q is a tangent line drawn at the point A. P, Q and B, D lines are parallel. So already marked to each other and extended C, D meets P, Q at P. A, D equals 
AD equals PD. That's also marked in the diagram. Then BAQ is X angle. Give reasons for ABD is equal to X. ABD is equal to X. What is the reason? AB D angle. So here can you see BA is a chord. BA is a chord. And here these two lines are parallel. We can see BD is parallel to PQ line given. This angle and this angle alternate angle. So that's why these two are equal. So D, so A, B, D is same as B, A, Q. That's X. So we can give how many marks for this? We can give Just one mark for that. Let's do the next one. Give reasons for ADB is X. ADB. Now we found X here. ADB. ADB is also X. So what's the reason? This angle is X. So we need to find ADB as X. So can you see AB is the chord of the circle? And what is X? This is the angle between the chord and the tangent line. So that is equal to this angle. What's the reason? Alternate segment theorem. So we can say ADB is also X. That's because of alternate segment angle. So that's the reason. So this is the angle between the chord and the tangent is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. So this is on the other side of the circle. So that's also X. So that's also one mark. And what about the third part? Show that BCD is bisected by AC. BCD. So you have to show that these two angles are equal. So we can see DBA and DCA are same segment angle. So DCA is also X because that's equal to D, B, A, same segment angles. So this is X. Now what about the other one? When you take other way around, A, D, B is X is same as A, C, B. Same segment angles. Now you can see these two are equal. These two are equal. So AC line bisect the PCB angle. So we can say it's same as BCD angle. So AC line. So we can write First, D, uh, D, C, A. D, C, A angle is equal to A, C, B. That's X. So, A, C line here. Or you can write B, C, D angle is bisected. by AC line.
So how many marks for the third part? You are getting 4 marks. And let's do the next part. Prove that PD line is parallel to AP. So we'll mark all these angles we found. We found all these are X's. It's also X. All these are X's. Now how we show that PD line? PD line is parallel to AB. What is this angle? Now can you see these two lines are parallel? This is also X, alternate angle. So we can first write DAP angle is X. Why? It's because of alternate angles. If this is X, this is also X because it's an isosceles triangle. So we can say DPA angle is also X because of isosceles triangle. Now can you see this angle and this angle both are equal. What are those? Corresponding angles are equal. So DPA angle is equal to BAQ angle. That's X corresponding angles are equal. If corresponding angles are equal, the two lines are parallel. So therefore, PD is parallel to AB line. So how many marks for that one? you get four marks. So we get 10 marks for the whole question. Let's do question number 11 that's about sets. The below incomplete when diagram drawn to show a set of information regarding people who came to a certain sub post office during a certain day. So you have to copy the given when diagram in your answer sheet and after naming the sets, include the above data in it. So let's see what we can mark. 50 people came to buy stamps. It's not given. Here this circle represents people who came to post letters. 15 people came to send telemails. 20 people came to post letters. So we can mark 20 here. Those who came to send telemails also bought stamps. So that means this set telemails is a subset of the set stamps. So that means bigger circle should be stamps and the smaller one should be telemails. So for we can label like that. Now we can mark. 50 people came to buy stamps. So this is 50. 15 people came to send telemails. So this is 15. 20 people came to post letters. Those who came. So we knew that telemails set is a subset of the set stamps. Now we can do two. Part 2, if 10 people came to buy stamps and to post letters, how many people bought only stamps? So stamps and posting letters is 10. So that means only this part is 10. So if we identify it properly, I'll mark that region. So this part, only this part shows 10. The people who bought stamps and only uh, people who came to post letters. That's 10. Now we can fill the other gaps. So this is 10. And what is what about this part? 
Now the difference between 50 and 15. What you get? 50 and 15. You get 35. So 35 minus 10. We can say this part is 25. That's 25. So what they ask? How many people bought only stamps? Only stamps is this region. So that's 25. And if only 7 people posted letters, only 7 people posted letters, only 7 here. How many people bought stamps and sent telemails only? So the whole circle is 20. This is 7 and this is 10. So 17 you have to subtract from 20. So 20 minus 17, you get 3 here. So this part is 3. Now the question asks, if only 7 people posted letters, how many people bought stamps? Stamps and sent telemails only. Stamps here, this one, and telemails. So, telemails only. How many people bought stamps and telemails only means here, this region. So, that's three. This part, the common region for the stamps and the telemails, that's three. If they ask what is the what is the number of people who came only for sending telemails, that means 15 minus 3, that should be 12. Only te telemails, that's 12. But in this question, they ask how many people bought stamps and sent telemails only? Three people. And then if 75 people came to the sub post office, altogether 75. On that day, how many people came for the other needs? So outside the two circles. So how you find the outside value? This whole thing is 50. 50 plus 7, 57. So 75 minus 57. Eighteen people came to came to the sub post office for other purposes. So let's give marks for this one. So we can give four marks for showing the values. That means the first part, copy the given diagram in your answer sheet and naming two sets and put all the three values, you get four marks. Then calculating the first, second part, 25, that's two marks. And third part, calculating how many people bought stamps and sent telemails only. So that's two marks. And the last part, two marks. So altogether, we have given 10 marks for the whole question. Let's do question number 12. It's about volume. A right circular conical shaped container of base radius R and height 2R is completely filled with oil. That oil poured into a right circular cylinder of base radius 7 and height 21 centimeter then half of the cylinder is filled with oil then that becomes here this becomes half 21 over 2 show that the base radius of the conical container is given by this so volume of this cone should be equal to the volume of this water, half of the cylindrical container. 
So not the full one, half of the volume of the cylindrical container. So we can write down volume of the cone. One third pi r squared, that's r squared, h, h is 2r. Volume of the cone is equal to half of the volume of the cylinder. What is the volume of the cylinder? Pi r squared h. Pi r squared. r is 7 here. h is 21. So that's equal. Now you can solve this and make r as the subject. Pi get cancelled out. Then what you get? r squared and r r cube 2 r cube over 3 is equal to 7 squared here 21 you can write 7 times 3 so 7 to the power 3 times 3 instead of 21 i if i write 7 times 3 i can write 7 to the power 3 with 3 over 2 so what is our r cube is equal to 3 into 3, 3 squared. That's 9. 7 cube, 9. And 2 and 2 becomes 4 here. So, how do you find R? Cube root of this answer. So, R becomes cube root of 7 to the power 3 and 9 and 4. But we can see 7 to the power 3 with cube root. We, you can take 7 out. And you can write cube root of 9 over 4. So that's the answer given there. So that's R. Then using logarithm tables, find the value of R to the nearest first decimal place. So let's solve that. So R equals, we need log tables for that. So take logarithms both sides log r is equal to log of this. Now here this is 7 multiplied by that. So what is addition? Multiplication becomes addition of logarithms. Log of 7 plus log of this. But cube root means power one third. So you can take one third down. And this one, how you write 9 divided by 4? That's subtraction of logarithms. Log 9 minus log 4. So you need to know laws of logarithms. Multiplication becomes addition of logarithms. Division becomes subtraction of logarithms. When there is a power, you can take the power down. Now you can use the log tables. So we'll refer the log tables for 70, 0, 90, 0, 40, 0. And before that, you have to find out the mantissa. How you find out the mantissa? 7 in standard form is C. So, mantissa is 0. And here, what's 9? Nine, 9 also, same thing. So, mantissa is 0. And 4 also same. So, we have to find out the decimal part using the log table and the mantissa part is the same. 7. So 70 0 you have to refer the log table 70 0 70 0 8 4 5 1 9 0 and 4 0 90 0 90, 0, 9, 5, 4, 2, 4, 0, 40, 0, 6, not 2, 1. Now let's subtract these two first. 0. 0.9542, 0. 0.6 not 2, 1 subtract. 
0.3521 divide by 3. When you divide by 3, you get 3 times 1. 3 times 1, 3. For 22, that's 7, 21. For 11, that's 3. And for 20, that's 6. Now, when you round it to 4 decimal places, you get 0 0.1174. And this part, 0 0.8451. Add it. This is 5, 7 plus 5, 12, 1 remaining, 5, 6, 9. Now you have to use the log table and anti-log value, 9, 6, 2, 5. 9, 6, 2, 5. 2, 4 is there. Yeah, 2, 4 is there. So that means 97. 97 and we need we need one more 97 here we'll look at it again what's the value we need 9625 9625 here 9624 is there so, 91, 7, 2. 91, 7, 2. And we need to write down. We are taking anti-log value. So, we have to write down. We are taking anti-log of this. So, here... R becomes anti log of 0 0.9625. We got 9172, but the mantis is 0 means that's 9.9172. 9 now we need to find the answer correct to one decimal place. Let's see again. It says first decimal place. So, what's the final answer? Final answer is this is 9.2 because the next number is more than 5. You have to round up. So, R becomes 9.2. Is this in centimeters or? Yeah, all these measurements given in centimeters. So, this final answer is in centimeters. So let's give marks. So the first part, we can give four marks to show that this R value is this. Up to this point, four marks here. And then using the log table and solve, Six marks for that. So we can give one mark here, taking log and then referring log tables to marks and then dividing by three, one mark and take the addition, one mark and taking the anti log value one mark so altogether six marks so six and four altogether ten marks so we have given ten marks for the whole thing so we covered all questions in the paper two one to twelve questions in part a six questions but you have to select only five questions and the second part also you get six questions but you have to consider only five questions so make sure that you do the paper first and then watch my video to check your answers